Hello, and today we'll be looking at this exciting package from Emacs. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that little bell icon to find out when I'm uploading stuff. So, what's in the box? It's an Emacs thing, and it is the Emacs Tiny Hawk S. Now, I wasn't lucky enough to get the original Tiny Hawk, but people rave about it as the best indoor FPV experience you can have. Um, and basically they've revised thing on this new S model and allowed it to take 2S. And previously on Emacs, all I've had was the Baby Hawk and I found that really, really good. And I was impressed already because there's this leaflet inside that says, if you're on 2S, change to profile 2. If you're on 1S, change to profile 1. Basically, they haven't just tuned it, they've tuned it separately for each battery, which is already like way above what anybody else does just just by that anyway this is you get the lovely little container and some some bits in it I'll, I'll go through the the little bits first some instructions quite quite a lot in there to read I've gone through it yeah a spare set of props I haven't checked what size these are pretty small uh, quite quite a different looking fit than normal though screwdriver and some spare little bits and bobs battery charging uh, well a battery charger essentially you can plug this into USB and you can plug in the 2S or 1S batteries, or both in fact, and it will charge it. It's not going to be super quick via USB, but it's it's a nice solution. We've then got this, this is the 2S battery, and this is a 300 milliamp hour 35C. And then finally down here, you've got the little quad itself, which has also got this 1S battery in, which is a 450 milliamp hour 8160C. And this is a completely different looking sort of whoop style quad to anything I've seen before. Well perhaps not what you've seen before because you may have seen the original Tiny Hawk which had the sort of same downward props. Props under there, um, everything else is above and it's pretty sleek little design. It's 75mm so it's not as tiny as your regular uh, whoop style quad but things have sort of grown um, and it's just nicely put together. It's typical Emacs uh, in that sort of sense. Uh, motors come in plug in here you've got the camera here the USB port just there nice and accessible let's just take this battery out and see what's going on underneath nice battery mount point underneath with these sort of elastics which can take presumably either the yeah take either the batteries it's interesting it's very light uh, what's it weigh apparently 30 grams without a battery is what it weighs and then it, it depends which battery you use to, to get what you get uh, spec wise on it, the uh, motors here are 0802 15500 kV, very high kV. It's got some sort of RX in there which is free sky compatible. It says D8 or D16. I'm not sure if that means it's an SPI, I'll, I'll check that out when we connect it. A uh, little CMOS camera, doesn't say what mil that is, it's probably pretty wide angle on, on these ones. You got a 5 amp uh, 4 in 1 ESC board and a F4 flight controller running the Matex F411 firmware. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's bind up, quickly get it on beta flight. Um, might need to mess around with the OSD and stuff, but shouldn't have to do much else. And then we can take it for a proper indoor flight. It's it's deemed an indoor flyer, um, and that's where your 1S battery comes in. Presumably then if you're going 2S, this is, becomes more of a, a garden or outdoor flyer. We'll see how it goes indoors first before we decide what to do with the 2S uh, idea and yeah, take it from there. Okay, so here we are in beta flight. Let's take a quick look at how the uh, Tiny Hawk is set up. The Tiny Hawk S, I should say. Ports wise, we've got a smart audio on your 2 nothing on Serial RX. Uh, so this is going to be an SPI um, receiver. And configuration wise, we've not got motor stop on, I'll be adding that. 8K loop and uh, SPR access set to FreeSky D, which is the right thing to be set to. Uh, RX set is there, which is nice, not much to mess about with there. Battery, a uh, pretty good sensible range here with a max cell voltage of 4.5, a minimum of 2.9, and the warning of 3.2. It's appropriate for these smaller quads that tend to sort of dip down a lot more often. Now the, the PID settings, I'd normally change this around and, and do all sorts with it. I'm kind of interested in this one because um, it's got its own profile stuff depending on which battery you're on, which I find interesting. So profile 1 and profile 2 
quite different. I don't know if the rate profiles are, are different, but they seem to be. That is not... Um, it doesn't seem to have much of a super rate going on there. I mean, 60 is, is quite quite gentle. But uh, because they said they, they came up with a specific tune for each battery, and you can see the difference there between uh, 1 and 2, and that's literally 1 and 2S, I'm quite interested to fly as is. If, if it turns out that that's a bit non-responsive if I want to do anything really quick I'll, I'll up the super rates but the, obviously the rest I'll be leaving behind the receiver I have bound it uh, the channel map is wrong for me so I'll be changing that hence why my quad is just spinning meaninglessly modes wise um, fairly good uh, set here the only thing I would add is I'd add um, air mode on switch uh, this is running the the 400 beta flight, but I, I notice it's not the um, the beta version, which is why 1051 works okay. Uh, finally, the OSD fairly sensible, fairly minimal, um, but I'm used to what I have, so I'll be changing that around. So let's do that now. We can take it for a test flight. Quick mention of this little charge, which is really good. You just plug in your battery, a light comes on, um, and it goes off again when it's finished charging. I'm using these little GMBs here. There's a switch to switch between high voltage and normal battery. The 2S that came with it, which would plug into these balance ports, it doesn't say it's high voltage, so I'm going to charge it as regular so I can use the switch there. But yeah, this is really nice. This is uh, lets you charge a whole bunch of batteries uh, for people without a charger that can do so, and it's very simple. Right, so off we go on our maiden FPV flight and just obviously flying around the house here using the included 1S battery. And the first thing I can tell you, just almost immediately after sort of the first 10 seconds, is this quad just felt right. To explain that, I, I fly a lot of different quads and there's plenty that you need to put four or five batteries through before you kind of understand how it works, how it responds um, and you kind of have to get used to it. This one just felt right from the get-go. So Emacs have done a, a really great job in getting the tune right. Now I would still say for me, because the rates are so different, it felt a little bit weird. Um, especially I'm used to these little quads in sort of whipping it round on the yaw stick to get very fast turns in. Uh, with this you, you could do it but you need an awful lot more stick so it's it's kind of a little bit weird that way but again it's very friendly from a beginner point of view because in that mid stick section you didn't have um, a really harsh movement you had to really move the sticks far um, before they did much which is actually a good thing but um, yeah and it's really smooth as well so uh, again well done Emacs this is a really lovely quad out of the box and um, initially I'm just really flying it around here just working out what it can do how it flies so the things I'll mention that I also notice is there's a fair bit of distortion on the camera when you when you whip it around you can see it if you look at the corners inside the house this will not be much of an issue uh, outside you might find this is this is worse and you can see that just going through that table how low profile it is we can fit through the smallest gaps possible um, it really is amazing for this sort of thing. So another thing I really liked about this is like you could fly it around pretty fast, but if you wanted to take it slow and sort of you know fit through gaps or, or try and explore the smallest areas, you could. That worked brilliantly as well. So the camera's wide angle enough to let you. And uh, just having a crash here to test out turtle mode, um, and that's all good. Uh, again, the the other thing about the one problem with being low profile is it, it can sort of slide along. You have to pick the right way to flip back over. It did also, because it was so thin, manage to wedge itself under some items a couple of times. There's just no drift at all in the control here. It's really easy to just sit there and hover, look at stuff, and then just take off uh, and whip it around the corners. And uh, of course, inside in a small house, you'll feel a great sensation of speed, even if in reality, it's not actually going that fast at all. It's sort of walking speed quite a reasonable flight time of this uh, 1S battery. I'm going to call it uh, a good four minutes based on the fact I spent some time crashing on the floor and retaking off again. It's uh, flight number two now and the weather's not looking too bad so I've decided to open up the back door so I could go out uh, and see how it performed 
basically to see how the control signal and the VTX performed. As per usual in these little SPI quads, the RSSI indication would have you believe you're about to fall out of the sky. Uh, generally you can fly it down to a really low RSSI, which is quite unnerving. But uh, video signals holding up well here. Uh, I should point out that I'm using the rapid fire module, which does a really good job in these sort of tougher conditions. Outside, it's not much breeze happening at the moment, so we've got pretty lucky there, but it's a real uh, fun thing to fly inside to outside. It, it's one of my favorite things to do on these little quads. Where these things don't necessarily go well in a sort of big open space, when you're going from inside the house to outside the house like that, it's really good fun. We're into Horizon now to see uh, how this feels, see if we can get a bit of extra speed, see if we can get some extra angle. Trying to roll, you can see how that uh, limited rate really does affect it. It's not fast enough to uh, really be able to do anything snappy there. Camera wise, you'll notice the big sort of bloom as we go outside there. So, inside the house where it's quite evenly lit, you know, you can turn the lights on and everything looks quite nice. This camera really doesn't like light changes, so going in here it looks really dark and takes a little while to catch up, and going out it looks like there's just a, a bright piece of light. So, it, it you know, it's par for the course in these sort of quads. The camera's not amazing at light handling. It's got no wide dynamic range. Uh, so th and this is why I think this is really suited for indoors, which doesn't necessarily translate to outdoor flying. So I decided I'd need to up these rates. Aside from the... Um, Super 8 being lower than normal, they've actually put the RC rate down as well, so I decided to put these up to my normal settings, which is Super 8 at 0.8 and the RC rate at 1.0. I haven't messed with their PID at all, literally just the rates. And the point of view here is not about it being super quick, although it certainly needs to be quicker in the rolls and, and the flips, it's more about this is what I normally fly, so this is what my muscle memory thinks should happen. I should mention as well about flying as I do here in angle and horizon mode. I'm, I'm a big sort of proponent of go out and fly your quads in acro. Um, and outside, I, I believe everybody should be flying acro at all times. Inside, though, when you're in limited space, um, I think a self-leveling mode is not only fine, it's, it's almost the only way to go because there's just a little bit too much having to uh, adjust constantly when trying to keep a hover uh, and, and again it wasn't long ago that doing flips on a sort of 1s quad and being able to have the power to recover it especially sort of limited space inside just wasn't doable uh, and this thing goes really nicely it's it's got lots of power I mean I, again with older 1s quads I was always thinking my my throttle stick had to be up all the time and this one you can see it's flying sort of between 30 and 40 percent throttle and it's doing a grand job so it's got plenty of power there so with this sort of quad you can really make any space into a sort of racing course or just an obstacle area to fly around or somewhere to explore which is what i really like about it and if you really put the hammer down inside it really does give you a great sense of speed it's it's a sensation you won't get outside but inside it feels so good and instantly you can stop it and just see if you can sort of then fly it really accurately in a small gap and see what you can find there and with something this small i tended not to even bother landing on the floor I just stick it on me uh, myself there hello and welcome to the little strip of land where we're out with the uh, little tiny hawk s i came to fly outside with the idea of testing it on 2s but i'm actually going to start with 1s why? Because 1S really ripped inside and I was interested to see if it really did feel slow again outside. Now with a quad like this outside anyway you're not looking at sort of big open spaces but even where this is mainly indoors perhaps if it's your first quad you might be thinking well I want to try my first flip and you'd want to do that with more than sort of 10 feet below you in the ceiling. So getting out to big open space which is incidentally not necessarily this one this is quite <laughs> full of hazards um, is a great idea for that so uh, it's, I think it's mostly an indoor quad but it's quite valid to get us outside but I would talk about maybe using a single feature like using this tree for example to fly around or something like that because if you just go up and down a big field it's going to feel a little bit pedestrian 
but let's uh, let's fly this out first. One S first, then we'll try the two S. See how it goes. All right, so off we go, and of course we can fly this in full acro now, um, and it feels just right, just like my other quads. You can feel a lot more of that lens distortion, and you've also got, and this is the main problem in this sight, you can see the ground darkening when I poke it towards the sky. That is a real issue in this particular sight because I need to see where the trees are and things. I haven't got that much room, um, and me sort of drifting out like that can create a bit of a problem. But I'm trying to sort of use the idea of the single feature. It's um, it's not bad. I mean, it, it does feel a little bit slow because it's just a little quad. And I've cocked up a roll there and gone down. And my goodness, you wouldn't believe how thick that fell in, in terms of the uh, the thorns and that. But yeah, so 1S is fine to fly around and sort of do your sort of my first roll or my first flip or whatever. Even in that uh, original rates it had. It, it's absolutely fine. You see, we can get a little bit more speed by sticking to the ground. Proximity helps give the impression of speed on this thing. So as soon as you're up high, it doesn't feel right. What I don't like about this outside is the way the camera distorts. When you've got like features like trees and you're trying to line up at them at an angle, it gets a little bit more harder uh, trying to line up when that distortion happens. You see that it really doesn't like its own prop wash when you're falling into it. It's quite reasonable and it's fine for doing those rolls again in this area that weakness of the camera is exposed i can't i can't risk flying around some places where i can't see below myself uh but you know this is all fine and so uh, i can bring this down and we can have a go at the 2s and see how that goes so of course first thing to do before we fly on the 2S is to follow the instructions about changing the PID profile to number 2 and changing the rate profile to number 2. If you try and fly in rate profile 1 and PID, PID setting 1 it will not be happy. You see there we've got a fully charged 2S battery. It came with a 2S, it did not say the 2S was high voltage so I charged it as a normal 2S. And uh, instantly you can see the amount of sag on this battery. I mean it, it didn't suggest this battery was anything decent i think it said it was 35c but it is getting hammered as soon as i'm up on the throttle like 60 percent it went down to five point something volts so instantly i'm sort of like well i can't i can't ram the throttle up all the time and get this to really see what it can do on 2s because it is just sagging now i'm not sure if this is a problem with the battery i've flown a lot of 2s uh whoops and um we've we've had you know decent hv um 300 milliamp hour batteries and they've been very good is it the battery itself or is it the connector it uses these little i can't remember the name of them it uses the same connector as the 1s and uh, I, I have a feeling they have a a maximum amount of amps they can put through so i don't know if it's the battery if it's the connector if it's a combination of the two it's basically meant that what i can do is fly around but without really giving it much much stick so effectively I'm flying it still like I'm on a 1S even though I'm flying a 2S so I suppose if you want to get the very best out of it you might think about adding an XT30 connector and then flying with decent 2S LiPo something like a GNB the problem is by by doing that you're cutting yourself off from the 1S as well which is not great and even if you wanted to make an adapter for it you're adding weight so it's kind of like Ugh, well that's a bit of a not the best situation so you know I think I'm back to where I was when I was flying it inside this quad is amazing inside it's it's kind of okay as uh, your to get your training wheels uh, as far as flying outside goes on 2S or 1S but uh, I would I wouldn't do any great amazing things with it outside it, it can explore around a tree um, it can help you practice your very first acro maneuvers but that's about the size of it well i thought this little thing was outstanding albeit with a l few little caveats and one of which is as an indoor quad this is amazing it uh, it flies so well on the little 1s battery you get a decent amount of flight time it's completely locked in and you can pretty much fly anywhere. If you can see the profile of it, there's no sticky out bits. And when I first looked at this, I had to say, you know, what's the range in this gonna be? I can't see 
the antenna for the control link. I can't see the antenna for the uh, VTX. It's in fact just behind me there. But the fact it doesn't stick out doesn't seem to have any bearing. So you'll probably get about 100 meters outside. But inside the house, going out into the garden, around the walls and stuff, it's absolutely fine. And it's that thin. It means you can just, even though it's like 75 mil instead of the more traditional like 66, 68 for the original Tiny Whoop, this thing will fit through gaps like that. I mean, there's nothing to it. So that part is absolutely fantastic. These little 1S batteries, really nice. Um, just the right size. I'm getting a good four minutes every time. If I'm if I'm taking it easy, I get longer. It's really hard to thrash it about even more than that inside um, to get any less. And I've got a whole bunch of these uh, Goning GMB 450s, which are exactly the same size and are a really nice battery as well to use. Uh, and they're fairly cheap, and you can buy a whole bunch of those. And then you can use the included charger. Do three of those at once. Uh, just plug it in USB, and that works pretty well too. The only misstep with this, because I said before, the, the tune on it, the smoothness on it, the instant like feeling that you've got control is really, really good, so thumbs up to Emacs. The misstep was this 2S battery. Now, I don't know if this is a battery problem or because it uses this connector and it's not supplying enough amps, but this was hopeless. I mean, presumably Emacs went out and, and flew this on 2S, because as soon as you give it the throttle, you, you don't like to see the voltage drop to like five volts on, on a battery who's sort of absolute minimum is sort of 6.6 .6 really, but it does. And it means when you're going outside and you're like, watch me go 2S, you, you're having to slow it down to such a degree that you might as well be on 1S. So this is potentially fixable by using a, a different batteries. The, again, the GMB equivalent of the, the little 2S 300 milliamp hour high voltage batteries are very, very good. But then you talk about having to change the connector, and when you change the connector, it's like, well, then I can't plug the 1S batteries in for around the house, and that becomes a pain. So I'm going to qualify this as being a superb quad, mostly for inside. Let's call it 90% inside. And I think it really works as a beginner, because those rates, although feeling a little bit slow for me, um, means that you can do quite big stick movements, and you know, you're not going to go into like hyper spinning. Um, especially sort of indoors or around the garden and stuff. So somebody who's thinking this might be like a first quad to get into it is probably in a quite good place because there's no need to do any tuning. There's no beta of flight stuff to do apart from maybe setting your modes and stuff. And you can just fly it around and it will fly nice and gently. It is put up to me crashing it into all sorts of things around the house and even outside. It's really easy to fly, really predictable what it was going to do. I like all of that and it had a decent amount of power so your your sort of hover point is like 30 percent and um, it can it can fly around for a long time you can be gentle you can be fast we like that if as a beginner you're sort of thinking okay i want to get into these sort of trying acro let's try flip let's try roll you can most certainly take it outside and you can do you know my first roll really slowly with that 60 percent rate it goes like this it's a little bit like take it up high you'll be fine um, and when you get into that you'll be wanting to up your rates and do more that's when you want to move on because as an outside acro quad this doesn't really work the the camera distortion it doesn't work itself well for trying to line in on stuff i didn't like the light handling you saw me there sort of above the trees and then suddenly i can see nothing and i need to see where i'm going when i'm above trees like that and again in an open area it feels a bit slow so it's a great training quad Experienced people will love it indoors because you can still blat it around pretty quick. Uh, it, it's not going to be a good outdoor quad. That's when you'll be wanting to say, I need to move up to a, a dedicated outdoor quad. But for what it is, yes, very, very good indeed, but know its limitations. And I don't think this is a particularly good implementation of 2S, but I think this is an absolutely cracking 1S quad indoors and even a bit outdoors. So this has been, of course, the Emacs Tiny Hawk S, and it was kindly supplied for review by Banggood, so thanks very much to Banggood. And of course, there'll be links down below for where you can check it out. Um, I'll see if I can put links in for these batteries as well if you need some spares. But for now, I hope this review's been helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.